At a scrapyard in the Ghanaian capital Accra, workers burn electronic cables to extract precious metals. Electronic products with a large quantity of copper are highly sought after by scrap dealers. Yeah, if we get a chance, someone dispose uh, computer items, we do buy so that we scrap it as an aluminium copper. We burn it to the copper inside. When we burn, the smoke is proving that uh, disease, so we doesn't like it so. So we need the smoke to calm down, so that when we burn it, we won't face any difficulty from the smoke for sick. Workers, both adults and children, sift through the ashes for scraps of metal. When it rains, ashes flush into nearby ponds and rivers where animals graze. Across the scrapyard, hundreds of workers take apart electronic products. Only the parts containing copper, such as electric cables, as well as metal and plastic casings are kept for recycling. The rest are dumped or burnt, as there are hardly any e-waste recycling facilities in the country to process them. A specialist team from Greenpeace visited the area to study the impact of e-waste on the workers' health and the environment. Greenpeace scientist Kevin Brigden says the toxic content of electronics could have dire consequences on those who are repeatedly exposed to them. Heavy metals present in some devices, such as lead, cadmium, mercury, are highly toxic, even at low doses. They can have effects on the nervous system, on the kidneys and other organs. Of particular concern is the effects of lead and mercury on the developing nervous system in children. Other chemicals, including some brominated flame retardants, can build up in our bodies through repeat exposures. And for some, there's evidence of long-term effects, including on brain development, the hormone and immune systems. Many of the chemicals present in electronic devices are environmentally persistent. That is, once released, they will remain in the environment for long periods of time. Ghana is rapidly becoming one of the favorite destinations for obsolete computers and other electronic waste from developed countries. Open-air markets selling second-hand goods are thriving across the country. Hundreds of containers filled with electronic goods arrive at ports along the coast. Many of them come from developed countries such as the Netherlands, the UK, Germany and the United States. Local experts say much of the electronic products arriving in West Africa are declared as second-hand goods. But in reality, the majority of them are e-waste. The bulk of the computers that are shipped here, the old obsolete second-hand computers are broken. They just don't work. So why would anybody want to give us computers that don't work? It is dumping and nothing more. A large part of second-hand electronic goods come from Europe and the United States. Old CRT monitors are discarded as many prefer stylish flat-screen TVs. At dump sites, names of institutions such as United States Environmental Protection Agency and other institutions from countries like Norway, Denmark and the Netherlands are found on discarded cases. The monitors of well-known global brands litter the area. People in the developed countries bring them here um, ostensibly to bridge the digital gap. But in actual fact, they are creating a digital dump. You know, um, we don't need all these obsolete computers because of the health and environmental implications. Local authorities worry that e-waste dumping could become a major problem because there are no laws to regulate e-waste trade and recycling in Ghana. We can predict for now, but for years to come it could be a problem because uh, gradually uh, computers are creeping into our backyard, other electronic gadgets that are home used are all coming in and uh, let me say the future could be bleak if care is not taken to uh, come up with control measures. Today, dumping of hazardous waste from developed countries to developing nations is prohibited under the Basel Convention. EU law also prohibits the export of e-waste to non-OECD countries like Ghana. Yet there is a loophole used for exports from EU, declaring the e-waste as second-hand goods. Environmental campaigners say laws alone cannot stop the growing e-waste trade in West Africa.
Electronics producers should take responsibility by banning toxic chemicals from their products and they should take back their products and recycle them in a proper way when they become waste. Only then can they prevent their products from ending up in developing countries like Ghana where they pollute the environment and harm people's health. Young workers play football after a long day at the scrapyard. Most of them come from poorer areas in the northern part of Ghana as well as neighboring countries. They are the ones who suffer the most from repeatedly being exposed to toxic chemicals. They do not have any idea how toxic chemicals affect their health in a long term. We do not have the facilities to recycle them. They are killing our people because they contain very heavy toxic metals that are not desirable for our health and also the environment. They are fouling the environment for generations and generations to come. There is no way that we can deal with these problems.